All right, so we're back with another crappy tier list. This time, going over every we're, FNAF game. We are we're we're starting to go over every FNAF game. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah. DLC is all, This is all DLC. This is yeah. This we have a DLC section because this list has a DLC section. We're going to be rating the FNAF games. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> remember, kids, because this FNAF turns <clears throat> ten next year. Ugh. Do you feel old yet? Rem I know I do. I still remember freaking Markiplier's FNAF 1 playthrough. Just be like, ah, the, st the beginning of everything. <laughs> yep. Speaking of that, the nostalgia. FNAF 1 has to get S tier, because it's the start <laughs> of literally everything. You could say it's not as advanced as the other games, and you prefer other games to it. You have to give the first game its respect. It earned it. Also, like, I, I might be the only one that thinks this, but FNAF 1 felt like it was the only one that was actually really legit scary. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, it, not to mention, it's like, it is a game that perfectly works standalone. Like, you could play the other games. The other games, like, all need lore from each other, and especially nowadays. Like, okay, to make sense of Security Breach, you need to play literally every game ever and read every book ever. Where it's just it's like, oh, no, you can just go in, play it, go out. Also, there was a there was backstory in there, but it was very very small, minute, and it it, it actually did draw people in because it was very basic, you know. Yes. It was, it was back when it was just like, oh yeah, a murderer killed five children, stuffed them into the animal suits. That's why they're haunted. Yeah, it's it's a little out there, but you can grasp your head around it. Yeah, it's not like ridiculous like most of the newer stuff. <laughs> What is didn't Matt Pet like just release his ultimate 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 FNAF timeline theory until the next one? Yep, he did. He did. It's finally over. And, so, and apparently, this whole time we've been fighting Afton's wife. It's finally over until the next one, which is always how these things work. It's finally over, and for some reason, literally everybody is either related to Afton or or Henry. These are the only. This is the freaking Kingdom Hearts sore effect where we're just like, there's only two people that matter in this entire universe. The main character and the main villain. Everyone else can go fudge themselves. But also, all of the other characters are in some way related to the main character. Uh... How have they not also, made a FNAF anime yet? Also, one funny thing, though. Oh, actually, they, they did. They, they did make Wait, a FNAF anime. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean other than slideshows. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I don't know. But what, one thing that's funny to note about this is that apparently, according to MatPat, through in FNAF 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we all play as the exact same character. Yeah, even... Uh, I mean, it's a theory I could follow along with, but it's also like, man, this is a fucking stretch. It's well. He wants to be there. That's the thing. He 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 knows they're after him. He wants to be there so he can shut them down. I agree. Yeah, I understand. The logic is sound enough. And then in Ultimate Custom Night, we play as William Afton, which I can believe was I, I that that is one of the ones where it's just like okay, this this is one of those few game theory ones where I'm not, scratch my head after it's like this is all punishment for all the hell he's he's put people through. I can follow this. I accept this. Yep. Just don't try to get into the books like I did. You will. <laughs> You will. And, and you know what's the funny thing? I still think Matt was wrong about uh, the books. I think a lot of the community is wrong about the books. I think the books are canon to the main series. The books do just, not matter the until they aren't, do. It's just like, y'all ain't, ain't paying attention to the small details. Uh, anyway, let, we're going we're gonna to go through this list. We're just talk about FNAF 1. FNAF yep, 2. Yep. Okay, so anyway, yeah. okay, so FNAF 2. Where are we thinking of this one? This one was like the one that had all the other ones brought back. Yeah, and it had new ones, and then the ultimate twist, it's a prequel! Yeah, it's a prequel. This one was like when Scott decided to be like, okay, now time to subvert expectations. <laughs> okay, we've had our good setup one, everyone's basically understanding. Okay, time to fuck with them. Yep. Honestly, I'm gonna also put this one... Actually, I'm gonna put this one in A tier, yeah. because... I think it wasn't as good as the first one. It definitely wasn't as scary. It was a lot more chaotic than the first one because there's just so much to manage at once. It only gets worse. And it, it felt frustrating. It didn't feel fair like the first one. Yeah. Like when you when you messed up in the first one, you felt like it was your fault. 
Yeah, the first one is like you got four, five animatronics, but four of them, well, three of them function exactly the same. Close the door in time and you're fine. This one's like, okay, you got Foxy, you got special rules, and Balloon Boy has special rules. You gotta do this for Bonnie, you gotta do this for Chica. Oh my god. Got, and then you gotta wind up the marionettes. Why not the music box remotely? What? <laughs> Can't you just like to create an automatic thing to do that? Yeah, right. And, and how does that even begin to work? I'm just looking at it. At least with Foxy, it's, Foxy's justification for not getting guys like, okay, he's making. You can kind of give a pass to. How the fuck are you winding it up with your mind? Yeah. It's it's very very weird. It's 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 it stretches your your belief. And then for now, three of you are like, uh, hold my beer with the freaking typing in a phone call into the freaking wall. Well, that part's not a canon. Hey, anyway, speaking of for now, three. Yeah, this one I think I think three was actually kind of it, it was kind of a it was kind of a step back into the breathing space. Like it let it let the player breathe a little bit more. It even had the first night where it was. Where it basically nothing let you happens. Get used to it, it was a tutorial before, level, and then it, be, right. that it, threw, it, it, it let you get used to the things before throwing you head first into it. Yeah, FNAF 3 is one of my. I actually prefer FNAF 3 over FNAF 2 personally. Yeah, same here. What? Honestly, FNAF 3, in my personal opinion, was just better. It also introduced the whole villain of the whole thing. Yeah, FNAF 3, in my mind, is the actual finale of the franchise, despite the fact that there was like eight games afterwards. Like Personally, just... for me, the finale was FNAF 4. See, I would have agreed, except for that freaking box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Scott had originally planned to release what was inside the box during the Halloween edition. And then change his but mind. Didn't. He, but he apparently didn't because the community got the theory wrong. I don't believe that. I think it's just more like he didn't want to disappoint them, which I'm like, okay, at least that one I can kind of understand, sort of. Well, I mean, technically speaking, if they got it right, then he wouldn't be disappointing them if they got it right. I don't know. It's a... I, I don't know. I, I just... Like, I don't know. I, like, whenever, see... whenever I'm afraid to disappoint a community, like, with my writing, and, like, have, like, my, my twist reveal, I will actually just change what, like, what it was to fit what the narrative is. See... This kind of has a flaw. A part of me feels like even Scott didn't know what was inside the box. Like, he ran into that thing, he'd be like, Okay, I'm writing this stuff as I go. Uh, what's inside the box? I don't know. Like, what, what is inside the box? What is inside the box? And then we find out in FNAF 6 what it is. But uh, as for this, I would have to say it's kind of B tier for me, honestly. I would have laughed my ass off, though, if he, he, you know, he unlocks the box. It's a string, a secret string to the embarrassing photo of Michael Afton at the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> a secret string! Good thing he didn't pull the secret string revealing the secret compartment of my secret box. <laughs> I really want a embarrassing photo of SpongeBob at the Christmas party! <laughs> Merry Christmas, SpongeBob! <laughs> the entire episode focused around what the frick is in a box. Yep. JJ Abrams' favorite episode. <laughs> yeah, it was. Alright, anyway. And also yeah, FNAF World E tier. Most polarizing FNAF game, I think it's pretty sick. Well, one of well, the actually, most. Uh, I'm gonna put it to D tier because, like, it had some very good lore and implications. It was. It, it it also was kind of funny. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Just like, is my voice annoying yet? And also, Scott Hoffman is the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> the rainbow just constantly shit talking you the entire time. Yes. Scott Cotton is the final oh. boss, I'm pretty sure is based on real life. Yep. And now we have when things started to get off the rails. See, this is actually... I remember when this thing was like one of the most beloved games, but only because you actually do stuff. Yeah. It was one of the most beloved games. Like, here's the thing. When I say it went off the rails, it started to go off the rails, this is the game that it started in. Like, it wasn't the cause... It was just the beginning. It's like your child discovers a brand new craze and starts and just like does it for the first time. It's like, oh, wow, it's really cool. It did that. Or the, the, my kid did the thing for the first time. And then the kid just keeps on doing it. That's what this was. 
is it is essentially what happens when a child learns the word why right first time it's amazing you know it's like oh wow it's their first word it's the word why now they won't shut up about it <laughs> you know uh but honestly since given that it was the first time that it did happen like this was a revolutionization for the series in yeah. my personal opinion i have to put it in nest here fair enough i understand I don't know if I fully agree with that, but I can understand why you come to that conclusion. I have actually, I mean, I'm actually you no, know, maybe you give it an A tier, I think. Yeah, because like, it, it was very lackluster in terms of what you actually did. Go back. Also, and... So at this point, oh, sorry, I interrupted. Go back and replay FNAF one, and you might get a different experience every time. Go back and play Sister Location. Ah, it's the same experience every time. <laughs> Yeah. Especially with that fucking night four inside of the with with the marionette baby, not marionette baby, balloon mari balloon things. Entered. Well, were they entered? Yeah, you're trying to hit screw the thing shut. Is more what I'm trying to do. Oh, oh the oh the mini renas. Mini renas. That's it. I I I kept, I kept trying to say balloon and something. It was like Ballora. That Ballora. was it. Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah, uh, if I mean, yeah, FNAF 1 had a randomizer, so it made it feel a lot more fresh with replayability. With this, there was no replayability. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah you're, no, you're right, you're right. FNAF 6, though. Uh, this one was... This is the Pizzeria Simulator, correct? Yeah, Pizzeria Simulator. <laughs> that one was one hell of a curveball. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, this is just a funny game. <laughs> it's like it's actually a full-on game, and you're in, you're being indoctrinated into it. Oh, by the way, I just remembered something. Sister location, and also just one thing. You know, it's a true ending when you're playing FNAF One. <coughs> wait, wait, what? You know, Sister location introduces just like you know you're getting the true ending when you're playing FNAF One because that's when you, you get, because oh. that's how you get the true ending. That's that's funny, and technically it wasn't completely like FNAF One, even though it was the closest one that we had the entire franchise yeah. to it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. Go on. Um. Yeah, Pizzeria Simulator. I kind of like this one because it's the only game in the entire franchise as a whole where you can just straight up say, "Nope, not gonna do it." Yeah, you could just. I'm just gonna. You can reject. It fighting an animatronic later, essentially. Yeah, you could just reject the animatronics, and you'll never actually run into them at all, and you'll also get the laziness achievement. Yeah, right. You get rewarded for not doing anything. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's, it's like, the one where you can actually be logical and rational, I gotta put that in S tier. Yeah, I, I, plus I do like, the, I do uh, love that ending monologue. Like that, I think Michael gives over the speakers to be like, they're, they're, for, for every one of you, I hope you move on to the better place. And for a special one, there's a special place in hell, and you don't want to keep the devil waiting. Oh, that's right. That, right, right. Although, that, was, that wasn't that was Michael, that was Henry that said that. Oh, Henry, well, you know what I mean, the recording. Although, for one of you, the darkest pit of hell is open to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. I was what? I was like, damn. Ah, that's a great place to end the franchise. So, next game. Yeah. Okay. So next game that we did, well, that is technically where he is. Yeah. Ultimate Custom Night. I, I, I completely accept the game theory, theory that it's Mike, that it's William Afton in Hell. Yep. Although I have to say the game itself was kind of lackluster. Oh well, yeah. It, there was no lore. It, yeah. It, it, it's you're playing FNAF. It's very basic. There's not it's much very of a story. Basic. Although it is really, it is okay. It's okay. Yeah. The fact that it's a free game is one of those where it's like, oh, well, technically most of these are free games, but it's like, the fact that you don't have to pay money for it, it's like, okay, this is fine. Right. But yeah, that is that is the thing, though. Um, yeah, no major lore implication. And this technically was the end of the series for FNAF. For like, five, this, this, for this five is the, whole minutes. Like, no, like, for real. This is like the, the last time Scott did it all alone. Yeah, this is like the essentially end of and a half. The Scott Cawthon era. Right. And that was supposed to be the end of the story. Yep. That was supposed to be the end of the story. And to quote the Kaiju no Kame, but it made too much money. Well, no, like, it didn't make any money. Well, This made no money. Fair like, enough. It, it was free. True enough. 
Right. But what I'm trying to say is like, this was supposed to be the end of the story. William Afton dies and he's in hell now. That yes. is the end of the story. Where could you possibly go from here? How about a reboot? Well, we went to the phone game. I, Which Scott also pretty much worked on. I completely forgot this game even existed. What is this, FNAF AR? Yep, FNAF AR, which is funny because I feel like I'm the only one that actually remembered this when the theories came up. There was like a time when Map had was like, at some point there's this Ballora thing where, or, or there's this part where a woman is seeing Ballora through invisibility and blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, Okay, Matt, did you forget the phone game existed? Did you did you seriously forget that? Did everybody that works at GT Live forget about the phone game? Yes. <laughs> Apparently we did. It is, I, I, do you want to know why they forgot about it? I can explain this in a, in a, in a very quick way. Markiplier didn't do a playthrough of it. Yep. Even though he was in the commercial for this. Weird. Actually, wait, no. Markiplier did do a playthrough of it. He did or he did not? Did DID? Uh, maybe it's like a one-off. I don't. I don't remember. I thought he did VR. Uh, no, he he did do a play. He there's. I'm pretty sure the video's still up. He he played this game. I might check. He just did, he didn't play all of it, but he played some of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. So maybe that's probably why he didn't finish it. That's why nobody remembers it. And that's why it's the mid-tier. Well, he didn't finish FNAF VR's DLC either. True. So yeah, that's why it goes in the seats here because it's like it is a game that exists and everyone forgets about. And this is the one that Map Hat theorizes is about uh, William Afton's wife. Hmm. So that's where that's from. Yep. Then we have FNAF now VR. We have VR. <sighs> I don't know where to put this because I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't as good as the first as the first couple games. I I played the game myself. I didn't like it. I really didn't like it at all, actually. I liked, I liked ideas of it. Just like I like I, <laughs> I like everyone's reaction to the FNAF one animatronics moving outside your window. Ah, they're not supposed to do that. Yeah, uh, I guess. But like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie though. This 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 game really did not make me feel like I enjoyed it. No, oh, you just didn't like it. And that guy's you're gonna put it in E tier then. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Uh, no E, like, like elephant yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, E. I'm gonna, okay. Because I, I play the game myself on my VR headset. It makes you feel nauseous. I'm saying, <clears throat> in, are you going to put an E tier as an E as an elephant? Oh. Well, no. Uh, the the elephant guy isn't in there. Orville. Uh... So It made you feel nauseous. You didn't like it as much. It's B. Yeah. Um, actually, let's go with C. Let's go with C. Alright. FNAF Security Breach. Uh, I think I know where this is going. Because you played this we one. Waited. We waited so long for this game. Yep. We had so much hype built up around it. Open world FNAF game. First time ever. Open world. And as you recall, this was the year when open world games were coming out and everyone was enjoying them and they were just so good. Like Sonic Frontiers, that was an amazing take on an open world game. Well, that was like the next year because this came out in like December of 2021 or something. Just, just, let, let, let me build up more. Let me build. Let me just build Fine. up more, okay? Let me, let me just... And then this game came out. And my word. They had a boss fight that was incomplete. And that was it. That was all they had. That was... They had so many sections of this game were just completely missing. Yep. What? And then they had DLC <laughs> for this game that didn't add anything. I'm putting an E tier. There is... Like, okay, to, to, to emphasize just how bad this game is, you will never complete a playthrough without seeing at least three glitches yeah right there are actually challenges online to get through the game without seeing any glitches <laughs> I, not scientifically possible I, I cannot tell you how many times i was just infuriated by the mechanics of how every single one of these characters worked the ai was so broken that they had to teleport them in yeah right 
I, 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 it's just very disappointing. And again, it, when you played it, it would actually just heat up your computer to an absurd degree because there was just so much data trying to, to load in at once for a game that didn't need it. Do you know what they, what I found out they did? The assets, the extra assets that they didn't include in this game, yeah. they just shoved them off to the side and didn't clean them up. I, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, that happens sometimes with game developers. With game developers. Right. But they didn't, they never fixed anything. They never did. And it's just, it pisses me off that they did that. I, I, I like the, I, I do find it kind of funny, though, that it heats up your hard drive only because you, that means your hard drive is experienced with the animatronics found in FNAF 6. Oh, brother. It's a I reference, guys. Uh, now uh, we have the FNAF anime. Which is part of Ultimate Custom Nights. I guess, yeah. I'm not even, I'm not sure if that is what this is, but yeah. Uh, I think it's fair to just put this in B tier. Yeah, I'd put it with UCN. Oh wait, no, this I know what this is. This isn't uh, this isn't ultimate or this isn't a custom night. This is an this is a FNAF fighting game. There's a fighting that came game. Out. Yeah, there was a fighting game that Scott released to uh you know, buy himself more time for a security breach. <laughs> Which is just like, man, if given how security breach came out, just imagine what it would have been like if you didn't buy that time. Oh yeah. But I'm gonna have to say it's probably FNAF World tier. Yeah, it's like it exists. That's it. Yeah, it exists. It's not very good. But now we get to the cream of the crop. FNAF 80, FNAF in space. Yes. I am waiting. The greatest out of all of them. The single greatest game I have ever played. <laughs> I, I have to say. Like, the, uh, you know, I, I thought the Darth Vader fight was a little tacked on at the end, but honestly, it really just showed how amazing the character was. And the fact that Goku came in at the last minute and Kamehameha at his ass just really felt like it solidified the series as a whole. You can't disagree. <laughs> Additionally, I, I think... I think it would have been a, a little bit nicer if they didn't do, you know, like the, the whole Sonic the Hedgehog cameo so late in the series. Yeah. But like, you know, the, the fact that he came in and they actually brought Hypersonic back was just <laughs> a, a true testament to understanding of how we fans really, really enjoy these games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Christ on a bike. Just, you know, it's just a th Though I will say, uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants re uh, reference didn't need to be there. <laughs> and, and he won't. Unless they were going to bring him in, but I, I don't know. Like, all they did was they just they just threw in that there's a pineapple under the sea and a sponge lived in it. But, you know, I, I think we all know who we, they were talking about. But honestly, unless they're building it up for the next game, it's just not going to do anything. This is, this is an obvious, like, post credit scene if I ever saw one. Yeah, obviously, obviously. Although I can't wait for for FNAF Under the Sea. That's going to be very, <laughs> very uh, interesting to see coming out in uh, what was it, twenty seventy four? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting uh, in a couple of uh, decades. <laughs> Recycles, yeah. Although I am, I am very, very happy that they decided to make the gameplay all entirely based on card games on motorcycles. <laughs> Finally. And the fact that they actually gave you a console that was, in fact, also a motorcycle for this <laughs> game was... <laughs> that was very nice of them. It was the smartest, it was the smartest decision they've ever made in this series. That's, that's all I can say. It's... By far, FNAF in space was the best game out of the entire franchise, and you cannot tell me otherwise. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> Do you think they're going to have a giant Godzilla battle like in this one, next game? Maybe, or maybe they're doing the FNAFs. Maybe they'll add Space Godzilla in the freaking DLC. Oh, true. If they ever do the DLC of this game, I'm really hoping to see some Space Godzilla. Potentially, we could see the the the, uh, the coming of Pac-Man. I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> I hope they bring the, uh, the GameCube Pac-Man and not the animated series Pac-Man, because the animated series Pac-Man is very annoying. Everyone is here. 
<laughs> everyone is here. I mean, I, I do know they plan on. I, I do know they plan on bringing uh, FNAF, uh, Freddy Fazbear into Smash at some point. What was it? What are we on now? Smash eighty seven. Yeah, right. Smash eighty seven and Knuckles. <laughs> and Knuckles. Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series two point nine. Oh yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Also, I'm very, very happy that they decided to include the the what was his name, Mr. Clean. Oh yeah. <sighs> oh yes, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting DLC that they add on to FNAF in space. Uh, yeah, but for now, that's all we got to do to say. That's all we have to say about this one. We hope you enjoy this Ace Gym Late podcast. Now get out.